And welcome back to Capitol Review. Three U.S. Army soldiers were killed and dozens of service members injured in a drone attack in Jordan this week. This marks the first time that U.S. troops have been killed by enemy fire in the Middle East since the beginning of the Israel-Hamas war. Joining me now is John Burns. He is the senior advisor for Concerned Veterans for America. John, welcome back to Capitol Review. We got a lot to cover. Let's get right to it. What are you, what's your take on what's happening in the Middle East right now? Well, first of all, condolences to the family of those three U.S. Army reservists from Georgia. Um, and, you know, God bless the, the, the three dozen, 41, as of last count, folks who've been injured. Some of those uh, injuries, I, I understood that there are things like TBI, traumatic brain injury going on there, and that can have some lifelong consequences. So, so you know, blessings to them. Um, but it's, it, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's a shame that they were in harm's way, uh, it, almost in secret in you know, on the Jordanian Syrian border uh, for a mission that, as far as I can see, as far as Concerned Veterans for America can tell, has no real clear core national interest for the U.S. at its heart. Well, according to our media partners at the Hill, President Biden has ordered retaliation for the attack. Uh, there have been a lot of discussions about taking retaliatory actions. Do you agree? Well, you know, we want to stop folks who will be attacking our folks when they are deployed legally and lawfully overseas, which, which, as far as I know, the, these these troops were legally and lawfully deployed. So we want to want to stop our enemies, but at the same time, you know, uh, we don't want to lead with our chin, right? We we want to make sure that our forces are postured so that they're they're at their most effective, that they have the greatest deterrence value, but that they're accomplishing missions that support core U.S. Needs core U.S. security considerations, and again, a, a small handful of several hundred troops on the Jordanian-Syrian border, uh, you know, that, that were not well known to be there, uh, a leftover from a counter-ISIS mission, doing some some potentially some you know intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance, which is maybe an ongoing activity at that base. I understand that, but but these were National Guard MPs from Arizona and engineer, trades engineers, electricians, bulldozer drivers from Georgia, all of whom came from their from their civilian life to spend time on active duty and to be put at risk, again, for something that, that just doesn't seem like it's clearly in the U.S.'s security interest to, to pull reservists out of their civilian lives. You know, John, many people are, uh, the discussion now is if you're going to at least send a message with some sort of retaliation strike, it should have happened already. Your thoughts about that? Well, I think I think it's important if we do retaliate to, that that we retaliate at the right target, right? I, I think that sending a broad message to the Middle East, getting it wrong, is it's it's not right. So I think it's important that we're accurate, that we're certain, that we we're bringing justice to perpetrators, not that we're just blindly striking out. Do you think President Biden and the government are doing enough right now? Well, well I, I don't think they're doing enough of the right things. Again, I, I think, you know, I think they should take a page out of President Reagan's book and say, as he did after the Beirut bombing, that this isn't what these kids signed up for. This isn't why I sent them over there to be targets. Um, and after some, some deep consideration, Ronald Reagan brought those Marines home from Beirut four decades ago. I think President Biden and the, the, the national security team around him, and that includes, you know, not just the folks that came on board with him, but the, the permanent staffers at the, the Department of Defense, the permanent staffers at the Department of State, you know, and the rest of the national security apparatus really need to rethink why we're there. Um, and do we need to have this force posture? Do we need to have several hundred troops in secret at a base on Jordan-Syrian border at risk, at target, you know, drones, mortars, rockets being fired at troops, not just at that base, but, but all across Iraq and Syria at these bases? Are they accomplishing anything that's worth the risk of their lives? And, you know, since since September 11th, 23 years ago now, we've had this, this force posture on and off in Iraq, in Syria, in Afghanistan for a long time. And I think the folks at the Pentagon, the folks at the CIA, the folks at the National Security Council have gotten so used to having a, you know, a deployment there that they can't fathom that maybe we just don't need to be there at all. You know, John, they say it's never too late to do the right thing. Is it too late for us to maybe do the right thing and maybe make some changes? I, I absolutely think that this administration can make some changes. I, you know, it's my deepest desire, although being a D.C. watcher, I, 
not entirely convinced it'll happen, but I'd really like to see Congress step up and, and do its constitutional role and weigh in here. You know, if there's going to be a strike, is it authorized by Congress? If these troops um, are authorized to be there, is it authorized by Congress? Do we have something specific to why they're there and not just using stale, you know, 20 year old authorizations for use of military force based around, you know, what happened on September 11th or what we thought would happen with Iraq. We've been using those for years. Uh, is there a reason that these young men and women are, are risking their lives there? And I'd like to see Congress step up and, and, and do its role. I'd love to hear from the folks at the, at the Pentagon who have assigned them there, why they think they're there, what's so important to U.S. security that they're still there. And I'd love to see the administration do the right thing and bring them home. John Burns, thank you very much. Thank you for having me on. Always good to talk to you and to the D.C. audience.